Hi, I'm Sophia and I've been on the systems platform for term one. So I'll introduce myself briefly before going on to present my work for this term. So I'm a lingerie designer by background and I graduated from LCF this July. So I'll start with provocation one, which was set by Graham Rabin to provoke us to hack our practices by changing up our methods and tools. So I run uh, an underwear brand under my own label to support myself throughout this course. So I used a classic corset pattern that I sell um, to sort of mock up and I, as I knew that it needed some improving. So I scanned the pattern in and half scaled it digitally. And then I printed out it out to make a paper mock up and I could see quite clearly what exactly needed to change on the pattern. So then I imported the pattern into Clo 3 d and which I'd never used before. Uh, and I tried to make the amendments that the pattern needed. Uh, I really liked Clo as a way to explore patterns and concepts without having to physically cut the pattern as so much time was saved and there was so much more accuracy in terms of line lengths and mirrored patterns. However, there were some lingerie specific problems with Clo regarding the corset not squashing the avatar's body, which of course it needs to do to fit. Um, so it would be useful to 3D scan my lingerie mannequin into Clo and drape on there instead of the avatar. So these are some artworks that I made for our first provocation, uh, sorry, our first project on MA Fashion, which was called Identity Material Hope, um, as I wanted to test them out for print pl prints uh, for corsets. So I made these paper mock-ups with the prints and I thought it was a really good way to test out print placement and see quickly whether I liked um, the print on the corset and where I wanted to place it and things like that. So it's something that I would use again. And then I tried out a new pattern for corsets for a corset by scanning it in from a book and mocking it up in paper uh, and looking at this miniature corset in paper really sort of hit home how much, uh, how restrictive corsets are by seeing how uh, the small version and how extreme the waistline is. It kind of made me rethink wanting to make corsets at all, uh, which is something that I've been thinking for a while now. I also did some lace placement mock-ups, um, which you can see here. However, these weren't as successful um, as the previous mock-ups as the ratio of lace to mannequin needs to be absolutely exact um, and the half-scale mannequin isn't an exact ratio of 50%, so it's not really worth uh, draping in lace uh, on in paper uh, just because the designs aren't really feasible um, uh, in full scale. So at this point in the term, I began working on a project called the Moda Challenge, uh, for which I presented at Barcelona Fashion Week in November. And I applied to this challenge as I'm interested in sustainable design practice and educating myself in this area. So one of the reasons I came to the RCA was to make my practice less harmful to the planet. The theme of the challenge was industrial symbiosis, and I was put in a group with three other women from across Europe to come up with a response to this theme. We came up with a speculative project called Linger on Matter, a play on the word lingerie. We designed a piezoelectric bodysuit that I've rendered here on Clo 3 d and the idea was to harness the energy of movement and sound that human beings make with potential medical applications. Um, for example, piezoelectric sensors have the po possibility of just detecting hormonal changes in pregnant women. Uh, and also we had another potential application, which is uh, the idea of self-powering large events such as the Olympics and festivals. So this was a great experience for me in terms of speculative thinking and collaboration, which neither of which I'd really done before. So the reason I'm uh, talking about this is because it really influenced my thinking for Provocation 2. So for Provocation 2, uh, we were presented uh, by Ryan Beveridge um, the task to limit our practice in some way. So I was thinking about something a grand challenge lecturer said to us, which was that we should turn the way we treat plastic on its head. So coming to the RCA has radically changed my approach um, and thinking uh, about the world around me. And it's given me this feeling that I can sort of change the way that we live. Um, so I was walking around doing my shopping and buying coffee and looking at all the plastic we were using and thinking about how much this is a design issue. Um, and I wanted my response to the provocation to turn the way we treat plastic on its head. Uh, so I was thinking about this and industrial symbiosis and also the idea of hyperlocality. So my limitation statement was, 
Can I make a garment out of local waste from a different industry? I walked around my local area chatting to shopkeepers about what they were throwing away and decided to go to Sainsbury's for waste in the end as they have so much of it. I wanted to use something very mundane, rubbish, and treat it differently to see if we could make it precious. We were also asked to start from a different point in our practice by Ryan. For example, to start digitally if we start usually start physically. I'm very much a traditional maker, so I started by using the skills on clothes that I gained from Provocation 1. I sampled the new corset pattern in my size by changing the avatar's measurements uh, to mine and made a corset out of uh, the waste from Sainsbury's. So I didn't find the aesthetic of the corset by itself, just in plastic, particularly interesting. So I made two and filled one with dried flowers and one with live flowers. Uh, the flowers are sort of a nod to my mum, whose garden they're from. Um, and you can see here that the corset didn't fit the same as it uh, fitted, fit me the same as it fitted the mannequin in a uh, clow. But it was useful to use clow to see the general shape of what the corset pattern would turn out to be. So here are the, some of the final outcomes of the corsets. And I then decided to, to develop the idea into a hat as wearing plastic next to the skin isn't really viable in the future for my practice. Um, so I began sampling in clay again and proceeded in the same way as with the corsets. Again, here you can see the material was very fragile and not durable. But the point of the, the provocation was sort of to make a statement about how we treat plastic um, and think about how going forward in my practice, perhaps I could use something more, more durable, a different waste from a different industry uh, that could be yeah, more feasible for fashion going forward. So at this point uh, in the term, the eyewear competition was open for entry, so I decided to apply to the project as it centred around the use of recycled acetate, which is in keeping with my current theme of recycling plastics. Uh, the material seemed suitable for eyewear, unlike the previous plastic pieces that I'd made. I put uh, in this ent entry with the idea of sandwiching tiny dried flowers native to Britain between two pieces of recycled acetate. So here are some of the flowers that I plan to use in the glasses. So ladies' bed straw, wood, forget-me-not, cocky flowers and common yarrow. So I was lucky enough to be shortlisted for the eyewear competition and have now begun prototyping an acrylic. I've been inducted in CNC and plan to experiment with recycled acetate and mould making to pour resin and set the flowers inside that. I found that there, there's a plant-based resin that's available, so I'm planning to use that rather than a synthetic one, uh, as it's made from fossil fuels and isn't recycled. And now I'm going to show a video of my work um, with music just for a minute. that I would like to move forward with for next term are thinking about how my practice can be sort of what I needed when I was younger. I'd like to continue experimenting with materials, expressing myself in the work, designing with sustainability in mind and sort of understanding myself better. So I've created this uh, mind map of my current system and I'm trying to analyse and improve each part of it. So next term, I'd like to experiment with piezoelectric yarn and sensors, biomaterials, knit and weave, and continue with plastics, 
hopefully to move towards creating my own localised regenerative fashion system in London.